take a moment to take a look at the pair of shoes you're wearing today. Do they feel comfortable? I hope so. Do they look nice? Do they fit the occasion we are in here today? Well, now imagine to wear those exact shape pair of shoes for the next four weeks, or let's say even four months, or let's say four years. Every season, every waking hour. Does it still feel like the perfect pair of shoes? Or would you maybe go for something tailor-made right now? I know this is very, very hard to imagine, but there is an area where we actually have not the choice to choose what we wear each and every day. I'm talking about orthopedic care. In orthopedic care, we have like introduced, for instance, prosthetic limbs, which replace a missing body part, or we have braces, which support or correct some um, malalignment, for instance, of a limb. Those have to be worn every day, for months, for years, on the body. Therefore, it is very important that they are really tailored to fit perfectly. However, we have seen a worrying trend over the last years or decades even, going for more one-size-fits-all solutions because it's just cheaper to make and there are too many people out there to serve. So here in Germany, we actually have a lot of really, really high-trained experts who can build custom and tailor-made devices which fit perfectly. However, they face rising cost and time pressure. Also, medical certification is an issue for them. And last but not least, they have less and less apprentices who want to pick up on this nice profession. Worldwide, if you look at other non-industrial countries, the World Health Organization says that nine out of 10 people don't get the prosthetic device or the brace they need to be mobile. This means 90% actually have to stay at home, feeling maybe useless without a device, so the mobility impairment they have for them is permanent. Let's go back to the industrial countries. Also here we have, due to the aging society, during the aging population, a huge demand increase. And there are illnesses like diabetes, which cause actually the numbers of amputations to explode. Therefore, we need to take all those technological advantages we have at hand and empower those rare professionals to enable them that they can make tailor-made devices for everyone. I'm convinced that by using digitalization or 3D printing, we can empower those professionals that they can make a solution for everyone out there, speaking about more than 100 million people in the whole world. Why am I convinced? Let's take a step back. Six years ago, I had to undergo an ill-fitting treatment myself. So for undergoing radio surgery, I had to wear such a halo fixator system. It basically consists of a metal ring around your skull. Then four titanium screws are inserted into your skull to fixate you in place. Um, it's a very, very painful sensation. You cannot move any millimeter at all. Being a biomedical engineering student at this time, I was quite sure there has to be a better solution to treat patients out there so that they don't have to suffer. Well, to be honest, I'm not this creative genius type of guy, so no brilliant idea struck me, no apple fell on my head. Um, well, four years later, I met a very creative physician here in Munich. He's researching at the local university hospital. His name is Simon, and he had actually the idea to create something custom-made, 3D printed for his patients. He wanted to use CT scans as a basis and then really fit it to them so that he achieved a perfect fit. I'd like to show where we are now. Our lead designer, Janis, here is showcasing his latest creation. As you can see, the brace is really perfectly following his jawbone, so it uh, achieved an equal weight distribution as it is based on a 3D scan or CT scan of his um, Head. 
Also, it's really lightweight and breathable, which is very important. And you can actually attach or disattach those things here in a matter of seconds, which is important for the daily cleaning routine. Thanks, Janis. <laughs> However, we wanted to f go bigger with this. So we partnered up with some more experts, like software engineers. We found there a guy called Felix, who made us possible to automate this solution. We have generated a lot of 3D models of different orthopedic applications, and based on 3D scans of a patient, or CT data, photos, or just plain measurements, which you type in on an online platform, in just a couple of seconds, you can automatically fit the device. It's then manufactured using industrial 3D printing, like we also use in aerospace or automotive, so this is a very safe technology, which we also prove by using virtual as well as physical stress testing of the device, up to one full metric ton already. So in a couple of days, we can achieve that the medical supply store who took the data in and consulted the patient on the right fitting device, achieves back a custom made device, which is then assembled to make the full, um, to make the full prosthetic leg, for instance, in this case, and also adjusts slightly, because you can never really capture the perfect image right from the beginning. There might be the need for some alterations in the end. Besides talking about fit, there's also a very important aspect I would like to um, explain to you. This is the fashion aspect. So we have seen in the past that medical devices are usually, let's say, boring looking or sterile looking in a positive sense. And uh, as we have seen with the brace, this does not have to be the case. We know nowadays that to bridge the so-called uncanny gap it is very important that people accept their device as a part of themselves, so acceptance is key to a good outcome. We have certainly come a long way from a wooden peg as a prosthetic leg, and we now reimagine the way how a prosthetic leg can look today. As you can see here with our model flow, this is a very, very modern type of prosthetic leg. It's almost see-through. Also, what you cannot see very good is the prosthetic foot inside. It's also fully 3D printed. However, this is only one of the possible ways what you could wear. This, for instance, is truly another possibility for him to wear, so he could switch to this for going to, let's say, a fancy party. It's truly for a black tie affair. And, as Flo is a very good musician and loves music, this is actually created for a rock festival. Like, if you want to go rock and park, this one actually can be hosed down with a water pipe afterwards if it gets too dirty. And it has a song text engraved on the back. <laughs> Thanks, Flo. So we think in the future, when we once captured the right fit, we can actually generate a lot of different designs for each and every patient. And we have seen this already, for instance, in eyewear, where something which you would be ashamed of in the past now becomes a personal statement, rather more like a fashion statement or even an accessory. There's a third aspect I would like to talk quickly about. This is functionality. I mean, the best looking device or the best fitting device is of no use if it breaks when you go to the swimming pool, for instance. So uh, we actually met Belinda this year. She's a very f active 50-something. So you see it's not only a solution for the young people. Uh, and she wanted to participate in a 10-mile awareness walk for the right of disabled people. For doing so, she really needed a foot which would enable her to really put her foot down, which would carry her the long distance. We went out there and actually created a very, very lightweight, fully prosthetic leg, and it's actually the first ever fully medically certified 3D printed leg in the world. As you can see, it's up and running solution, and it also goes nice with her accessory as well. We have talked today about fit, function, and fashion, or aesthetic. 
So, of course, from patient to patient, this might differ. We are all individuals and everyone has his own preferences. Also, from cultural background to cultural background, this can also have different priorities. I would like to share one last story with you where you see a really nice balance of these three aspects of customized orthopedic devices. Over one and a half years ago, we met Emma. So she actually was our first patient. And uh, she was at this time three years old, very active, going to kindergarten, unlike all her peers. However, she was missing her right foot since birth. So she encountered a lot of trouble, actually three major issues when going for a new prosthetic leg. First of all, there are almost none prosthetic feet for children out there because you cannot have all those small sizes in stock. It doesn't just make sense. When she finally found a prosthetic foot, maybe they had to cut down a bigger one, for instance, then she had to accept it. We were talking before about acceptance, and in her case, she often rejected it because it was looking too much like a real foot, but not close enough, so she really felt uncomfortable and rejected it for a long time. When she finally accepted it, then she quickly broke it because she really likes to jump into puddles. So she's really active and, well, prosthetic feet are usually not waterproof, so it easily corroded and broke. We asked her, what would you like to have? And simply by incorporating her favorite color, pink, or maybe some fancy unicorn like this, uh, into the device, we managed acceptance on first sight. She's now out and about, and she's rather complimented by her playmates at kindergarten for her pink prosthetic foot. So we really managed to turn her from a black swan into a pink princess. This has not only um, yeah, improved her physical development, but also her psychological development. Some months ago, we met Emma again. So she's still very active, now more than four years old. Also, her taste has changed. Now it's more going for the blue version. And we made a larger version for her based on the data we had acquired over 18 months ago. So it was very easy to predict, like, we just actually needed the, long, the new length, and then we could update the foot version. It scaled instantly on the screen. She could see how the new foot would look like, and then we printed it for her. We actually printed it twice because, well, she's very active. She likes to go to the swimming pool and in the summer to the beach. So we inserted one version with titanium screws instead of steel screws, which enables her to play safely at the beach. From now on, customized prosthetic and orthotic devices are as normal as standard versions and at exactly the same cost. We actually think we have created a solution which does not only enable the lucky 1% who have access to such highly trained experts like we mostly have in Germany, but actually everybody out there. So we will enable an individual mobility for everyone. What I personally learned over the course of this journey is that I think it's wrong to say that there's a genius guy sitting in a lab coming up with a great idea and poof, there it goes. No, I think it's quite typical to say you maybe encounter a personal problem, like myself with this halo fixator system, then you meet somebody else, like Simon, the physician, he had the idea, together with Janis, the designer, and Felix, the software engineer, we created a solution around this. We teamed up, actually, with two other serial entrepreneurs who gave us the possibility to leverage this until it becomes a full transformative process, which is already changing the orthopedics industry today. As we have seen today as well, there are already wearers who benefit from this solution. And with, without such a very, very strong team of experts, of lead users, of people who believe in you and share your vision, it would not be possible to change a whole industry. I therefore encourage you to go out there and find your team of experts so that you can also develop an idea, create a solution, and change something which you care about in a role that really fits you, like this little foot perfectly 
Fitz, Little Emma. <lacht>